Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about uh, HTML canvas sprite sheet animations if you're trying to make like a simple HTML game. Uh, I'm going to start off with this pink blob animation here that's pretty simple, just one little sprite sheet, and then move on to something with After Effects, like that raining star animation from the cursor right there. This isn't necessarily like um, a coding tutorial, I'm just kind of focused on my animation process, but I've uploaded all of my assets and stuff to GitHub. Um, where you can edit it and view all the code. Um, you can just go ahead and like download it as a zip from here, or if you're familiar with GitHub, uh, feel free to clone it and contribute, whatever. So in its simplest form, uh, a sprite sheet is just a standard to organize kind of like an animation or many different assets, uh, just frame by frame. And in this instance, I just have this simple little blob here. It's about 450 pixels wide. So the animation, each frame is gonna be 450 pixels by 450 pixels. And you're just gonna format a Photoshop document that is the width of your asset times however many frames you wanna do. So in this instance, I'm using uh, 4,500 as the width. And I'm gonna do a 10 frame simple little animation with the blob. So the idea here, is you're going to move a blob into an area that is each frame and to help with that i made like a little background square that's 450 square um and i just copy the blob over transform it however and repeat this plot process 10 times over and then i'll export get rid of the background save it as a png um, and start messing with it in the code So once you have your sprite sheet laid out, um, we're gonna go ahead and just export the whole thing as a PNG, but first we'll just get rid of the background uh, just to keep the alpha and make it look good on this animation in the canvas. And you can just save it. I'm just gonna call it sloppy. So once you have your sprite sheet, you can take it into whatever text editor you're using for the game code. Uh, in this instance, I'm using Atom, um, but it really doesn't matter what you use. Uh, I prefer Atom. Uh, I know VS Code is good and Notepad++. Uh, so what you're going to do first is create an image object. I'm just calling it Anim1. Um, and you set it equal to the JavaScript image class. And then you set the source of that object equal to the name of your sprite sheet, which is just sloppy1 png for me. Whatever. And so to draw it on the screen, I'm just going to use the draw image function, which is on the context of the canvas. In its simplest form, uh, you just specify the image you want to draw, uh, the location just using 0, 0, and then the width and height, which I'm just going to make it fill the entire screen in the canvas for now, and we'll see what happens. So as you can see, uh, it looks kind of goofy. It's just the whole sprite sheet formatted to fit the canvas. And I don't know if you noticed, but on the uh, when you refresh the page, it seems to kind of grow, uh, and that's because there's just some feathering on uh, each frame of the sprite sheet. Um, and we have the image being drawn in a game update function. So just a quick overview of the code I have. Um, uh, here's just a reference to the game area canvas, which I'm drawing on. Uh, it's 960 pixels by 540 tall. Um, and I have an interval calling a game update function, which I wrote the draw image in. It's calling at 50 milliseconds, um, which is approximately like 20 frames per second. Um, and so what we're going to do now is use an extension of the draw image function, which allows us to kind of set like a cropping area and select which frame we want to draw at a specific point in time. Um, so looking at this diagram here, which I found on the Mozilla documentation, um, you can specify a lot more arguments than just what I simply did, which was the second method here. Uh, we're going to specify a source X and a source Y, and then the source width and height, which is kind of like making like a cropping square on an image, right? Um, and if you remember, we have each frame set 450 pixels apart, so our source width is just going to be 450, and same with the source height. Um, and then we're going to increment the source X every frame by 450 pixels. So then it'll kind of, um, if you imagine like, a square across each blob here, it'll position that every frame update 
to the new one and then update the image in that same location as long as we keep the source or the destination X and Y at the same position. It'll update in the same location as if the blob is animating. So to do that, um, all we're gonna do is uh, utilize a couple more variables. Um, so if we take a look back here, we wanna adjust the source X and the source Y, <clears throat> which will be the first two parameters. Uh, so source X can be calculated um, using just kind of a variable you want to increment. So every game update, I'm going to increment this variable frame by one. And then using frame as the source X, I'll multiply it by 450, which is the width of uh, each frame. And so we just have everything horizontally, so we're not going to need to do anything with the source Y just yet. <clears throat> and then next is your source width and height, which in the image of our sprite sheet is just 450 by 450 for each frame. Uh, the next is your destination uh, position on the canvas. So we're gonna keep it at zero, zero every time we update the frame. And we're gonna wanna change the width and height at which we draw it at. So this is your destination width and height. And let's just keep it at 450 uh, by 450. <clears throat> so now if we take a look at what's going on here, it's nothing really seemed to happen, but that's because it goes really fast and our animation isn't looping. So right now, um, the frame is still incrementing, but there's no frames past 10. So in a half a second, it completes the animation. So to fix that, we're gonna wanna make the animation loop and we'll just check um, the value of frame using an if statement. So once frame is greater than nine, we're gonna wanna reset it to zero because um, we have 10 frames in our animation, frame starts at zero, so once frame is equal to nine, we've seen all 10 frames, and then we'll wanna loop back around. Um, so now let's take a look. And it's still, it's growing as you can see, but it, you can't really tell what's going on because we now, every time we update the frame, we're gonna need to clear the canvas. So I have a method in the canvas called clear, which just uh, just wipes the entire width and height of the canvas, and we'll just call that every frame update. So now you see that it's just kind of looping, and this is uh, like this basically the simplest you can get with like a sprite sheet frame animation. So here in After Effects, I've made just a pretty simple like raining animation with the blobs. I've added some like variation with how they're rotating, the scale, and the color, uh, just to look like it rains, and they just kind of fade out at the end. Um, so my composition is still 450 pixels wide uh, by 540 pixels tall. It doesn't really matter because um, you can just scale it in the canvas at any point in time. Um, but what we're going to do is you'll just take sort of any animation you have in After Effects and you can export it as an MP4. Um, and with that, you can take it into Photoshop and look at every frame by layer. And with that, uh, you can organize it into a sprite sheet. So now that you have an MP4 of your animation from After Effects, you can simply go into Photoshop and go to File, Import, Video Frames to Layer, and select your video. And then another window is gonna come up um, and simply just did from beginning to end because I cropped it well on After Effects, but had you not done that, you can adjust the little markers at the end and trim it there. Um, but yeah, from here, it'll just open up each frame of the video in a different layer. It might open up the timeline, but you can turn that off in Photoshop. You're not gonna need to use the timeline with that. Um, so here, I'm going to need to make the canvas a lot bigger because you're gonna wanna lay out each frame that's in a different layer into a sprite sheet. <clears throat> So to decide how much bigger I want to make the canvas, I take note of how many frames uh, in total there are, which in this case there's 45, and I just kind of think uh, how I'd want to like organize everything. So in this case, I'm going to do five frames a row and then uh, probably nine rows. So that'll give me enough space for 45 different frames to lay out. And then uh, once you resize the canvas, you'll just start positioning each frame. So once you resize the canvas, all the layers are in the middle on top of each other. And what you're going to do from here is start with the first layer and drag it into the top left. 
and then move on to the next layer and drag it right next to that as if you're uh, positioning the frames in the way a book is read. So, you know, left or right, top to bottom. And you just do that and over and over until you reach your last frame and fill the entirety of the canvas. So now I've positioned all the frames I need. Uh, I started to notice that there's 10 frames of white that I didn't really trim out as well as I could have. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete them and then uh, resize the canvas to cut those out. Um, and then now I'm going to uh, group all these layers together to get rid of the white space uh, just for the canvas. If you wanted to like overlay this on top of something, you don't just want to see like a white block. <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll just put all the individual layers into a group so I can edit them later if I wanted to. Then copy that group merge it together and use the color selection tool to erase all the white. So once you've exported your uh, sprite sheet of your After Effects animation from Photoshop as a PNG, it'll look something like this. Um, and the key difference between the last animation we did is that this is organized uh, along the X and the Y. So in our code, you're going to want to be thinking um, about how we kind of like looped it earlier. Once we got to the end of the row, we reset our counter back to zero. But in this instance, every time we get to the end of the row, we're going to want to increase another variable to note that we want to move down a row in our sprite sheet and then keep going across the row and so on. So um, quick overview of the code. I'm not going to go in too much detail, uh, but I just have an on-click listener on a different canvas called Rain Area. Uh, and I made it separate because in this instance, you can kind of like overlay animations on top of each other. And with this animation clearing this canvas constantly, I don't want it to kind of interfere. Uh, it's kind of hard to sync them up in that case. It's pretty easy and low, um, like not very intensive to just add another canvas on top. Um, so yeah, I have this click listener and when you click, it stores the mouse x and y in a variable um, and then it also flag a boolean to say that the animation is playing so in the game update function i just check whether or not that boolean is true and i'll call this function i have for the rain animation and so again similar to what we did earlier um, with our frame counter i have a frame x counter and a frame y counter and the frame x counter increases every frame update and once it's equal to four, meaning we've reached the fifth frame in the row, we're going to increase the frame Y counter and then reset back to zero. So it'll go like, and then back to zero and then down one. Um, and so then after we've made all those calculations, we draw uh, an image from our sprite sheet onto the canvas. And in this instance, it's the mouse X and mouse Y position. I'm subtracting um, 100 from the mouse X because if I hadn't been doing that, um, it would kind of play a little more to the, like the right of your cursor. Um, but in this, if you subtract 100, it kind of looks like it's at the same position as uh, your cursor, like the rain's falling out from the cursor. Uh, so again, with the draw image function, I'm just referencing the sprite sheet, which I stored in a variable called anim2. Um, and then I look at the frame x count and I multiply it by 450, which is the width of each frame. And then I look at the frame Y, which I multiply by 540, which is the height of each frame. And then 450, 540, that is the source height and width of each frame in the animation here. So each of these squares is 450 by 540. Uh, and then we want to display it at the canvas at these positions. And then I kind of shrunk it down once it plays on the canvas. I just divided the dimensions by two. Um, and so now to, oh, we'll also want to be able to reset once the animation finishes. So um, this is technically row zero, and then this is technically row six down here, um, and because this would be zero, zero. So there's, this last frame is technically frame like 24. Um, so once the product of them is equal to 24, we know to reset the counter back to zero, set is rating to false so the animation doesn't play again uh, and only plays when you click it. And so now you should have something kind of like this.
Uh, so looking back at the code, there's a couple more things we can do to just kind of mess with the functionality of this. Um, so I went ahead and I added and uh, updated some of the event listeners. I made a mouse down, a mouse move, and a mouse up. Uh, so every time you move the mouse, it updates the stored position of your mouse in the code. Uh, when you lift the mouse up, it'll just cut the animation off, set the flag to false, clear the canvas. And then when you mouse down, it'll now uh, constantly check the mouse position and then flag and just keep the animation looping. Uh, so I got rid of when it turns the flag back to false and moved it into the rain off function. So it only turns off when you lift the mouse up. So we'll go ahead and reset. And as you can see, the animation loops as long as you're holding the mouse down and it'll follow your cursor. Um, it, as you can see, it like kind of cuts off. So in After Effects, I could have gone back and I make them fade in later, the stars fade in later, uh, once they're like fully into the composition. Um, and also, things kind of look a little choppy. Earlier I was talking about the frame rate of the canvas is based upon what you set your like game update interval at. So if I turned it back down to 20, this will put us back at like 50 frames per second. Um, so like every 20, you think of it like every 20 milliseconds is a new frame. Uh, there's a thousand seconds, in, or there's a thousand milliseconds in a second. So if you divide this by, a, or divide a thousand by this number, you'll get the frames per second. Um, so now it looks like faster and like a lot smoother the animation um, and once you start like messing with this stuff this kind of affects the performance of your game um, but it allows for some cool effects and ultimately the HTML canvas is kind of like uh, you're kind of limited in what you want to do but it's a fun way to make a quick little game